Good morning, Nick. How are Hi. you? I'm really well, thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. It's so good to have you. This is actually take two, isn't it, Nick? <laughs> Not our final hour, was it? <laughs> Last week we actually tried to do this, uh, but unfortunately, I think I put a post on my my Facebook page actually to say we were having a few technical difficulties, weren't we? So oh. we decided to do a rerun, and we could introduce you properly and find out a bit more about you and your wonderful company, Riga Bianchi. Thank so, you. how are you this morning? Yeah, very good, thanks. I, funny enough, I was just going through your Facebook, um, uh, and you know your resilience calendar. And today is the fifteenth of July, and you said. Um, well, today, go for a long walk uh, if you're getting a bit overwhelmed. Well, I had a, a good workout this morning. I <laughs> found a house party out um, with some friends. So, uh, Sylvan, who's is, is a good mate of mine, he's a PT. And uh, so, yeah, I feel good. Always good to have some exercise as, as your calendar. Um, oh, wonderful. Yeah. So, is that something you've been doing regularly, or is it just during lockdown, or is it something that's just, just started? Yeah three times a week really since uh lockdown effectively oh wow Monday. Well, yeah. <laughs> and how are you feeling better for it was it, was it oh, something yeah. new? hard when it's when you're halfway through it you're just you're wasting <laughs> it you're wanting it to willing it to finish but um yeah. you know, it's uh you know it's, it's good and it, it you know i think a lot of things you touch on it is mental health and um and for me exercise is a wonderful um stabilizer for me and it um certainly makes me feel better and just having yeah. that been through the week i mean i normally do go to gyms but with gyms being closed until i think it's the 25th of this mm. month um it, again it um it's a bit of innovation and and this software which you and i are now talking very easily uh on Streamyard, house party zoom it's just it's yeah it, it's really easy it's revolutionised things, hasn't it? And I think, uh, I mean, we're going to get onto the COVID horrible word, but and, and the impact it's had. But I think it has had its positives, hasn't it? So I certainly, we when we talked, we've we've discovered that we've both actually been able to sort of slow down a bit, and um, and I think that's been important. But people have had to adapt to all the challenges as well. In fact, do you want to sort of share how how it's affected you? Yeah, uh, so let's go back to March the 23rd. Uh, the government measures or government announced lockdown and uh, store closures. So we had to close our store, which dad and I worked out was only the second time in our 166 year history that we have oh had to close the doors. Uh, all, you know, very stressful and um, as well. It's not just closing the store it's you have to we had to suspend and pause our delivery service and that was the real challenge because customers who've been waiting for their goods to arrive and maybe were expecting delivery that week were told that we, we can't we've had to you know lock down and um and it was managing that process so that that, that was one of the key important uh things for our point of view um was to to communicate and keep everyone in the loop on on that and you know i think that, that that was the hardest challenge i think yeah yeah and i mean obviously we're, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about the company and structure and your staff because i think you are you, your values are really important to think aren't yeah. they and we're going to touch yeah. on that a bit um by the way just let you know nick that we've got several people watching and who are listening sure. Please do feel anybody feel free anybody to say hello to us and if you have any questions for Nick or well, my phone's pinging it's on silence so I think a few are watching as well so, yeah, <laughs> that's excellent I'm trying to not be distracted but I can feel it yeah yeah fantastic so so um you're obviously one of the directors of the company and it's it's got an amazing history and legacy hasn't it so I thought it would be lovely for people to know a bit more about the history of the company because um it's it's it, there aren't many companies which are fourth generation are there I mean I know there are a lot of family businesses out there but uh, so where did it all start it started in northern Italy um, <laughs> on the shores of Lake Como and oh, that um, sounds so romantic. <laughs> yeah. And one of the questions Dad and I get asked is what prompted our founders, Arigi and Bianchi, to leave the wonderful shores of Lake Como <laughs> to come to Macclesfield. Um, but in very brief synopsis, um, if you track back to 1854, Italy wasn't Italy as we know today. Italy then was locked in a very 
uh, brutal civil war. Mm -hmm. uh, Northern Italy was no different and was uh, part of, uh, there was a civil war raging and Arigi who came over first, whilst a skilled cabinet maker, he lived in a silk town uh, wow. in Lake Como. And we know that when he decided to flee, along with other Italians, he wanted to go to a fellow silk town. And Macclesfield then in the 1850s was the largest producer of finished silk in the world. Yeah, yeah. So there were about okay. 71 silk mills. I've been to the silk museum and I've had lots of meetings with them and to really really get under the, understand how actually big it was. Um, there was, he showed me, uh, the, the curator from the museum showed me an article from the Manchester Guardian, I think it was in those days, saying, you know, required Macclesfield, like the Macclesfield Council or whatever they were called, that uh, were literally after 5,000 workers to come and work immediately in Macclesfield. So that's the backdrop as to yeah. why we moved from Northern Italy. We still yeah. have roots there, we've still got family there, but that's why the we came and that's where we hail from. Uh, but we were skilled, uh, Arigi uh, was a skilled cabinet maker. Yeah, um, and, I, and I noticed also when I was reading up about the history, in fact, we're getting some heart, Michaela Smith. Hello, Michaela. Hello, Michaela. Hello, Michaela, lovely to meet you and speak to you. <laughs> Thank a heart from Michaela Smith on a Wednesday morning. <laughs> so what I oh is she is she, oh I see you, you obviously know each other I wasn't sure if she was through me. Um, no, no, no. The other thing as well is that I think you started off in Sutton, didn't you? Before you actually found the premises you're currently at. That's right. Um, we operated from a, a terraced house for near enough forty years. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, there's quite a lot of pictures. I think you had a look on on the website and yeah. You come into the store, which I know you do, Kalini. We've got a wall of fame effectively and uh, <laughs> a historic wall of fame and there's some pictures there which show that it was it was tough mm. for, um you know there's chest of drawers like strewn on the curbside and there was um uh yeah it was it was hard uh but yeah that that's where it where arigi started he was joined about 12 years after by bianchi who married into the Arigi family. And he also was a skilled cabinet maker. And as Italians like to keep things dentro la familia in the family. Oh. And, Do you speak Italian then? <laughs> I can't have a surname Bianchi and not speak Italian. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so, something about you I didn't know, Nick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was um, uh, when Arigi in Macclesfield heard about his niece, uh, in Italy, marrying a cabinet maker called Bianchi, he was like, "Get Bianchi over here! I'm I'm expanding. It's getting big." Oh, and he, so they, uh, but they, they, they again, Kalini. There was no Streamyard or Facebook or LinkedIn no. or you know, get to know you. It was just okay. I'll come over and yeah. get on well, and they, and they did. And here we are now, 166 years later, uh, still, as you say, in the family. In, in the business and um you know we're, we're one of a few members of, of of a special fourth generation family business club yeah. there are millions of family businesses i think there's 4.8 million family businesses in the uk really? well okay. and chip shops grocery stores yeah. Harvard, uh, department stores but yeah there's there's but very few go mm. beyond the third generation which makes it, mm. makes it very special so, you know, when he first started, did he have a vision of what he wanted it to be? Or do you think that's just as the years have gone on, has it just evolved? Because I know that you've added on, you've built onto the business, onto the building and you've added things like the cafe bar and so on. Was there ever a vision where he wanted it to go or did he just think, OK, it's a silk, um, silk uh, town and it would be ideal? I think it was survival. For <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he winged it. Um, no, I, like I said, there was when he arrived, he, he just just worked hard, and, mm. and then he was again joined by Bianchi, and they just uh, were literally up and down. We're not just in Maxfield, but horse and carts up into the mm. hill, Buxton, wow. into Derbyshire and stuff. So just hard, hard work. Um, but then uh, they both. Uh, were inspired by an event that happened in 1851, which was the Great Exhibition. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the highlight of the great exhibition was the uh, Crystal Palace, Paxton's Crystal Palace, and they both loved that building. Oh, okay. um, and they had a vision that they ultimately did want to extricate from working, operating in a terraced house to yeah. to building an emporium. I think uh, the tagline was to suit all classes. And so that, that was the vision, but it took around 30 years to, to get to that position where they'd yeah. expanded sufficiently. Yeah. Uh, that, that they, but, that, but the inspiration for the building, which you drive by, come in, see off the train, that was inspired by... Uh, the Crystal Palace of 1851. Yeah, and I think we've talked about how I think that the, the the building is just so much part of the brand, isn't it? Because your brand of Arie Bianchi is everybody knows it for that. And I think in some respects, it's been the iconic thing that's helped you survive as well, hasn't it? And you've you've had to you've had a few battles. I think it was in 1970 when they were trying to put the road through, and you had to fight to get that. Wonderful. Um, yeah, let's have a, just a beautiful Victorian building. Um, <laughs> the finest examples of iron and glass architecture in the world. That let's just try and knock down because we want to put a road through you. Yeah, um, crazy. My father and my late uncle Tony, you know, really worked hard in in saving mm -hmm. that from happening. Yeah. Uh, petition. Some wonderful people signed a petition in the area, uh, but petitions, as you know, can only go so far. Yeah. Uh, but then the Victorian Society, which was then in its infancy in London, headed up by Sir John Betchman, who was a remarkable figure, but very prominent figure, heard about our plight and was in uproar that the council were planning. Well, it was it was done. It was a fait accompli, Kalini, mm -hmm. that they were going to just go right through our building for mm -hmm. a new road. Um, yeah. So having sir john on our side yeah oh hugely and i know for my grandmother it was a it was a source of huge uh, uh, pride that yeah. um when sir john alighted the train at macclesfield to meet my father and uncle it's like <laughs> you know author poet laureate broadcaster titan sir john came to macclesfield but no no that, that was uh you're, you're absolutely right kalini our, our brand sorry our building is synonymous with our brand and yeah. the two go together and that's what i think is why we've always hesitated expanding to yeah. other stores because mm -hmm. i don't think our brand sits on a retail park um no. No. you know we have looked don't get me wrong in the last well, certainly i've been in the business 15 years we have looked at other sites but it's just very difficult um mm -hmm. Now during COVID, or I'm delighted we don't have more stores. But um, yeah. the, uh, um, is it because like you know some stores are having to shut, like uh, like John Lewis. But I mean, you can re replicate John Lewis all over the country, can't you? But you can't yeah. really replicate the the feel when you walk in the store and the ambiance. And I think actually there's also a bit about your staff. And they've been all there so many years, and then yourselves are all around the building, aren't you? You and the, and your and the family are always yeah. there. I mean, when I go in the coffee bar, you know, there's one of you wandering around, and and so I think it's it's that feel that you could never replicate. And then sometimes diversifying um, doesn't actually help, does it? And in fact, can I share with you here uh, a comment from Nick Brown, a friend of mine? Uh, yeah. Never give up on your vision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying, Nicola. I'm trying. <laughs> Absolutely, because it is so oh, important. I'll, I'll keep focused. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, in terms of then the milestones, and then you've had your 150 celebration. And actually, something, a little known fact I didn't know, is that you have your own artisan beer, which was uh, for the 150th year anniversary. I mean, if I could go back to, I will come on to that. If I can do that, you talked about the staff, and, and I'm yeah. so glad you have done. You know the staff are the most important part of any business and, uh, we're so lucky and proud to have so many brilliant staff um who many of whom have been with us for 20 to 30 years yeah you're friendly with um my colleague margaret roylands you yeah. know she joined in 1988 wow fantastic ambassadors for the business um yeah. and, and that cements it there was a customer from arizona who came in last year I spoke to got speaking to dad and i it said this, this this store has soul you know um yeah and but that's 
yes, of course, we've got family members in, Richard's around, John's around, my brother, my sister, myself. But it's the start. It's, you know, you go to buy a carpet. It's very likely that the last time you bought a carpet, you'd have been served by Dina, who joined in 1986. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, it's really good that you've messaged the role that the staff play in the yeah. business. And I think as well, you touch on the family. One of the things I impressed, whether it's to the family business groups around the country that, you know, I talk to is if you are a family business, be in the family business because it's it's a selling mm -hmm. point. It's you know, And, um, you know, be, be part of it. And customers like to see us around and talking. And you mentioned the cafe bar. Um, I'm probably drinking too much of the coffee. Dad does the work. He, he's the one walking around. I, I should feel a bit ashamed sometimes. But, um, um, yeah, but you that comment there, yeah, very yeah, Ben's right. I oh, know Ben. Um, then it comes to the beer. My late uncle uh, is was uh, you know I miss him very much, and he he loved yeah. his he loved his beer, and he's had uh, had a really good relationship with a local brewery, Storm Brewery. Um, mm -hmm. Hugh, um, I know Hugh. I know there's another member. I, I know Hugh, and uh, and he was. Um, they just got talking about it. So oh, to bring a beer out, I think it went into one of the pubs near the railway station. Mm -hmm. And I think it, a barrel sold out within a day, which normally wow. would normally take a few days. So I thought we might be onto something here. So um, I then created a label and then I said, look, uncle Tony, who just re was retiring, you know, so look, you go and be our salesman for the beer. So when he did all these walks around places and um, so he was our ambassador on beer but it's nice because you, you could you're going to a pub and having a, a pint of Origi Bianchi for whatever it was or is two pounds three pounds four pounds it's um it's just a nice subliminal part of, you know a brand experience you know and it's very good beer actually yeah we did have yeah. a, a second taste I have a taste because I haven't actually had any of your beer <laughs> no well, Storm do a good product yeah, I, say, I've had, I think the food at the cafe bar is just awesome. I love it. It's one of my favorite lunchtime bit places. But also, um, I, I used to you talk you talk about Mr. Tony. I mean, I used yeah. to love visiting and having coffee with him at the because you've obviously expanded into so many different buildings. So I used to visit him at the warehouse and have coffee with him. Oh, um, nice. And it nice. is sad, obviously, that he's passed away now. But going back to the history, um, they took over after Enrico. Um, it, was it then the two Mr. Uh, Paul and Mr. Tony took over, didn't they? That's absolutely spot on in 1956 absolutely uh tony had done some national service and they both joined in the same year um dad tells recounts that it was it was not much going on i remember him saying um my grandfather was very conservative um uh, cautious yeah uh, there's no bit and i remember dad had said oh uh, my dad said oh dad to his dad uh, there's a leak in the roof and and my grandfather would say, get the buckets. He said, well, should we repair it? Well, we haven't got money to repair, you know. So it was, uh, you know, th this is the backdrop. So these, you know, two 18-year-olds, you know, go-getting guys, and they're like, what are we, what are we doing here? But it, yeah. then it's very much um, seen as you, you you continue the tradition and, you know, there's there's no option. You you do your school and then you, you carry it on. So, mm. uh, you know, in my case, I can only speak for my case, I, I, I only joined – I say about thirty, about fifteen years ago. So I, I had worked outside for about twelve or fifteen years, and I know that for the next generation, we'll be certainly encouraging that rather than going straight in from from school. Yeah. So you now at the moment, then in terms of the family, there's Mr. Paul, Mr. Obviously, Mr. Tony's now not with us, but then yeah. it's you, your your co-directors, aren't you? So how many of you are? Do you want to explain to everybody yeah, how five, effectively, five in our in our generation in our gen. Yeah, so uh, we all try and have clear demarcation roles. But as you know, clearly, in a family business, you can get involved in a, in anything, you know. Um, but uh, I'm over in um, AB Digital Towers, so that's the area I look after, which yeah. is everything on, which is online is so huge now for us. Yeah. That, so I'm actually don't work in the store. I only work I work very closely, but I'm only over the road. But I'm not yeah. store based, if you know what I mean. So we've got a team yeah. of twelve in Digital Towers. Um, my sister does all the HR insurance side, the kind of non furniture side of the business. That's Sarah. Uh, uh, yes, Sarah, of course. Yeah. Um, Richard, very much store based. Um, John, 
distribution, logistics, operations. And my brother does all the buying for the business, which is probably the most important role, the buying, getting the product mm -hmm. right. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's quite right. But in terms of that, we've got senior managers as well who all within that framework. But if, then you've got dad, Mr. Chairman, who's, <laughs> um, who has, you know, he's just... It's his gig, whatever he wants to do, you know. So, <laughs> so how, how, what's the secret to, you know, you're obviously going to all have different ideas and thoughts and stuff. What's the secret to making it all work? Because um, you must have, you know, working together in practice can be a challenge. So how does that work? And how have you, any tips you can give for, for other companies watching on? You know, we, we're talking, obviously, you're, you're quite a large company. You're mid size really. Um, oh, yeah. 160-odd employers? Please? Yeah, something like yeah, one five eight, one five nine. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean that's quite sizable. And then you've obviously got so many structures within that. And then you've got the the fact the the, the, the shop itself and then you've got the, the different mills. How do you sort of like oversee that? Mm. Make decisions? Is that got, a yeah, I think you've got to have faith. I think probably weren't brilliant to that before. You've got to have faith in your in your management, senior management team mm -hmm. and delegate. And I think mm -hmm. a lot before was doing it yourself and probably not trusting the managers but we've got to a size now where you have to you can't it just it's just impossible otherwise um small enough that we're flexible we're doing you know we're in touch you know if i if there's a uh, whether it's a lovely bit of feedback email or mm -hmm. or not so good which things do go wrong i get to see all of them um mm -hmm. if you look on trustpilot I'm, I'm personally replying to all of them and i think that's really yeah. important to a pulse you have to delegate. Then we did another piece of work with um, with a company, in, <coughs> excuse me, Instill, which did all about looking at us as individuals and what, how to get the best out of Nick Bianchi or what not to say to Nick Bianchi or to Rob. I found that really effective because mm -hmm. I know how to pitch things now mm -hmm. to my brother, to my cousins. I know what makes my cousin tick. I know yeah, equally, yeah. I know what doesn't make him tick and it drives him mad you know so i think for me that for me mm -hmm. that's really that was a great piece of work yeah um I mean, it wasn't like a myers-briggs test it was no. something i can't remember Kalini, but it was i think it was the insights because i've just been recently looking on uh, insight yeah. because what it does actually nick is it talks about the um the people's preferences because you can teach people skills and you can give them knowledge. You can teach them skills and knowledge and hard skills, whatever. But actually knowing people's preferences about how they wish to be treated is also okay. really important. And Insights is a program because I do all my work with young people, which I'm actually looking at using. Jigsaw. You're fantastic with Jigsaw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll come up. So, we must talk, uh, about talk about that. So I think that is actually um, it's really useful to know how people tick. And and that's that's the way you glue people together. To so, well, so to yeah, I, I think it's the same one. I mean, I'm I'm a sunshine yellow, I think. But there's a, oh, a, yeah. a, 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 a red in it. But there's equally people you just not really admired about the sunshine yellow. So you have to <laughs> you just modify it accordingly. And what it's what gets the best out. Of this. But yeah. by the way, this wasn't just to family members. This was across the yeah spectrum, with the distribution center manager to. Yeah after sales manager to uh internet it's the whole spectrum but i yeah. I, I i've got so personally so much out of it yeah uh, my brother's an interesting rob he said best out of rob agree with him what he doesn't like to be disagreed with so i don't know i, I really don't know how to play that one i think you just, <laughs> <laughs> i need to check with adam on that i don't know there's a bit of an anomaly there but um he's um no it, it, it look it's not an art but it's uh it's uh, but i think for me, what I love coming into work is is really trying to motivate the team and and, yeah. inspire and, and, and get the best out of them. And um, it did was, because sorry. I'm going to talk about your values now because I think that that is so. I think values for me are really important because, but not only your personal values, but also what your values are for the company and and your vision. And um, clearly, I, I I was looking at your website, so I hope you don't mind me quoting no. something from the website. The focus is on quality and provenance. Yeah. You need to continue to innovate and inspire. Yeah. And most importantly, striving to put your customers first. And I think that definitely comes across, farmers yeah. or otherwise. And we think the Antonios would approve. So I think that is really nice. So clearly, you're trying to carry on the legacy. 
Um, yeah. But I also think that values, we've talked a lot about values, haven't we? And, and I think your values, you know, if you ever do things not in alignment with your values, it, it, it just doesn't work, does it? So you need to stick to your values. And I think that does come through. Um, I mean, clearly you're obviously after prof quality. I love the provenance bit, but also, as you say, is looking after your staff. And I know that the staff, I've I've been going in the store for years and I've met them and I always know I can go and talk to, like Maureen was one who's come to my house. Oh, and, 1968 yeah. she joined, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's come in and she's helped us with designing bits and pieces. So, it, you know, but I think even down to people who, you know, whether they can afford it or not, you always get the help you need um, in the store and you obviously put your customers first but yeah i mean if you in fact can i just also share as we're on this before we go on uh, uh oliver dunn so <laughs> <laughs> very interesting how are you, how are you? i love him i love him yeah we we, we debrief a lot ollie uh, ollie and i he's got a great business uh he's from a so the simon chocolates uh, simon dunn chocolates yeah. founded in 1984 great family business um yeah. have a bricks and mortar shop uh, up in um high lake high lane disley uh, you must go and see it um yeah. but he he is constantly challenging himself and yeah. uh yeah. And what he does he's 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 presenting doing really well he's he's very close to getting on you know a television gig as well and but he, oh, he's wow. constantly he, he's he's looked during COVID about innovating his because part of his business was doing chocolate parties so that's physically going over but they've stopped but doing it remotely mm -hmm. and um yeah there's uh, we both love a book um called hunger in paradise and just never sticking still constantly challenging yourself you know never getting complacent never getting comfortable um if it's broke if it's not broke break it you know that kind of um so he's uh, i'm very glad he's listening in but he's a top man ollie and his wife kim as well she's got a great business oh fantastic so he's given us another comment and then this is our oh this is really nice thank you oliver in fact i did ollie i will do i can't i don't even call him ollie i did actually see your interview call him, chuck. Huh? <laughs> call him chuck. chuck yeah he's just he's <laughs> like nike like the swoosh he's chuck he's chuck <laughs> Yeah, I did actually watch your conversation with uh, Nick um, that you had, and I thought that was very fascinating. So thank you, and, and it'd be lovely to meet you face to face at some point. So yeah, lovely to hear. So going back to the um, to the COVID situation, um, yeah. so let's let's talk about that. So there's obviously been pluses and minuses, haven't there? But in terms of the positives first, I mean, we've talked about how it certainly it's helped me. I've I've actually, in a sense, it's benefited me from from and i think a lot of people from that ability to slow down and find your purpose again your why and find what's important to you and yeah. connect because maybe there's been time and i do recognize that a lot of people have struggled because they've been either furloughed or they've um, had difficulties but personally for you how's it benefited you I, yeah i was not knowing it but i was on a hamster wheel up and yeah uh, juggling a lot of things and not really having any time mm. for myself or being at home as much as I should be. Um, mm. And the demands of this business and we spoke off air and involved one of the two projects and um, it was, it, it was very time consuming, but it was all part of this adrenaline. But actually the, the, I, I work from home because the business still continued to trade online, mm -hmm. but it had, I had more time at home and I learned to love being at home. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got a, a four year old, he just turned yeah. four. Um, and I spent, I've spent loads of times with him and with Jeanette and just, just going back to basics. So yeah. it, it, it came at a fortuitous, t it was a time. It's obviously very tragic. And, you know, I've got obviously family and friends over in Northern Italy, which was horrific for them. I mean, you know, a town bergamo was you know uh, one of the worst affected spots in the world i think as a town and you know got friends up in bergamo so mm -hmm. it's not to say I've, I've enjoyed being in a thing because one has to always we always say Kalini, reflect of mm -hmm. what we're in at the moment with covid but uh yeah i i really did enjoy it and actually working from home i i enjoyed it i, I got used to it and um mm -hmm. since the store has reintroduced we reopened on the 6th of june it's hard now to to do that as much yeah. 
annoying, really. And I'm, and I'm, I'm con but the good thing is I'm constantly reminding myself. Like obviously today I've got this in at ten thirty, and I've got something else in, but I'm, I'm not. I would literally be, and Ollie and I, you know, Ollie was just on before. I constantly say, we, we're just as though like every, it's a weakness if you've not filled everything in your day, and and actually you're just busy or even socially. Um, and again, Ollie and I talk about this. You you could be like, oh, someone's invited me to to, to Corks out and Oldley, and then oh, there's something on later, and you try and please everyone. Yeah, you, you, you're not being the best version of yourself yeah. to any of them. Yeah. So I'm doing less. I'm saying no to more. Again, yeah. that was in your jump July calendar. Again, I think I can't remember which day, but yeah, yeah. that saying no to things, and I am, and um, I'm not even saying because of COVID or because of X, Y, and Z. Just saying, no, it's not for me. But thank you. You know. Yeah. Uh, I'm terrible at saying no to things, and and then yeah. I start getting overwhelmed and burdened by, oh my God, yeah. what have I done? What have I got involved in this for? What have I got involved in that for? But in terms of COVID, what I've learned from a business point of view is it was a fantastic camaraderie. Mm. You mentioned we employ 158 but for staff, but for the first five, six weeks, it was only about 10 of us. Mm -hmm. And it was roll your sleeve up time. There was no rank mm -hmm. or regiment. It was just let's do this and every day was different it was like yeah all right uh, do you think we could do this or on because we again we could still trade online albeit small cushions parcel force still operated so we could work with them uh but i don't want to miss any of the heroes as i call yeah. them a b covid 19 heroes who worked during that time yeah craig i've got to mention him head of health and safety and maintenance david drews freya on the online Dana, Alex, Charlie, who, who came off furlough to do one person deliveries, you know, as well as parcel force, because obviously yeah. we have two people in the van. And we constantly try to innovate where if one person, we even thought about, well, could we have, the, we couldn't do two person deliveries, but could we have one driver in the van and another driver mm -hmm. in a car? And obviously at safe distance, but still deliver it to the door, not to go into customers' houses. But we constantly try to find a solution for the customer because mm -hmm. again, that was our our absolute focus was looking after mm -hmm. those customers um, who had goods and they were a bit unsure, you know, but we tried where possible to communicate. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a real lesson we've learned. And, um, and you know what, I, I really appreciate you being so, you know, authentic and genuine about, you know, how you felt personally, because, I think that so many people have found that it difficult to adjust to. I, I know that challenges of juggling, you're juggling home and schooling and doing, If you, you've obviously got Harrison who's, only, who's four, yeah. so you probably not have the schooling thing to add no, into the I didn't have homeschooling. So I, no. to be fair, uh, someone did say that, so yeah, but you didn't have homeschooling. Nick. So yeah, I do respect that. Yeah. 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 And I mean, mine are, mine are older, they're past school and they're at university, they're all grown up. But my... So I do totally empathise with all the people who have really struggled with and who are still struggling because, you know, there is so much uncertainty. But I do know, and it's really lovely that you've you've been so genuine and have admitted it's been a challenge. But also I think it's important to recognise that the self-care thing is so important and people do get on this hamster wheel and they do. I've been guilty of it and it's made me sort of top, stop and take stock of what I really want to do and what's important to me and the people who are important to me. And um, and you you're able to. I mean, I think there is going to be the benefit of this whole situation is going forward. Just being able to still keep those connections going like this is just amazing. We can just have this conversation now, and you know we can have a Zoom or we can have a, you know. And I think people have connected with their families in different ways and with their friends because they've had to. And I think it's brought it back down to the you know the nuclear family had already been splitting up a lot, and I think it's now brought it back again a little bit. Um, what, what, what was lovely, Colleen, he was on, on Harrison's birthday, which was on the 2nd of June. I think on the 1st of June, Boris and the government allowed for grandparents to be re reunited. Oh. And, and that the timing was brilliant because obviously we've been following everything to the letter of the law. And yeah. uh, and it was just, it was such a special time. It was just, you know, because Harrison, we've been saying to Harrison, oh, it's the virus, but the virus could be a tesco van it, it doesn't mean anything to him but he understood 
that virus meant that he couldn't see his granny yeah. and nana. You know, but he was. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, that was uh, yeah. Especially, I, I do agree. I do. I mean, as a family business, apart from my mother, who, who I mean, just literally just retired, but she had a marvelous career in in the medical world. She worked at the surgery at Macclesfield. Um, I'm seeing a lot of my family every day, so you know, and a lot of the time it's not it's business and it's not family stuff. You know, it's like, oh, we've done this, we've done that, we've done this, we've done that. <laughs> um, but yeah, just just to, I try I try as well to um, I I need to get I started doing it just de-teching for an hour. Yeah. Or two. Now that's easier said than done. I don't know yeah. anyone who's listening whether it's Nicola who was on before. I don't know if she's still on now, but or others on who are listening. I think that's that was really good. Just just detecting airplane mode for a couple of hours. It's mm -hmm. harder now. Now I'm back in it, um, but that's another thing. Just little little signposts, just just to help. You know. But you know what? I was I was just. It's one of the articles I'm about to write about on LinkedIn. Uh, it was you know obviously people have heard about absenteeism and presenteeism, which is like costs companies like billions of pounds every year. But yeah. there's a new phrase: leaveism. And um, yeah, leaveism is yeah, it's L E A. Well, leaveism. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah leaveism. Yeah. And it's it's actually and the latest phenomenon that people are recognising, where it's people are finding, and it's because of tech, they're finding it difficult to actually leave work, and work follows them afterwards. So in, in other words, they can still answer the phone, they can still take their emails, they can still um and so it's almost like you, you can't actually leave work <laughs> alone because you're there with it all the time 24-7. And and even more important is that is that self-care thing of being able to say, okay, at X amount, I'm guilty of it because I will then sometimes work at long times. You know, please by the way anybody if you want to add any comments, there are lots and lots of people watching Nick. <laughs> Um, and so if, uh, if anybody wants to leave any comments, I've, I've just seen quite a lot of people. Hello, David, Debbie, Vicky, Julie, uh, Margaret Newman, uh, Joanne, uh, Stephanie, etc. Loads of people. Um, it'd be lovely. You know, I, I think it's people recognizing that, you know, going forward, you know, we, what do we do from here? So have you in terms of um, strategies, what you've learned from COVID, you know, are, is there any things you're going to slightly change going forward? So on the shop floor, the initial staff that came on furlough, they um, were asked to effectively be personal shoppers and around mm -hmm. the place. What we've done now is made them completely flexible in normally it was you work on the ground floor and that's your area and that, that there's a lot of advantages to that because you have that specialist knowledge and that's what we as part of our values you are getting specialist knowledge but actually it's just you know the freedom to work that everyone now who've come back into the business realized that they have to accept you know more responsibility and be more flexible they can't mm -hmm. have you know other i only do that and that's it because everything's changed you know we've now just introduced live chat on our website and uh one of my team in digital towers has, has, has taken that on board immediately and he's owned it and he's done brilliantly with it and and um i think i think that's the that's the most important for just be flexible and because we're you know everything's changing you know but i just I'll, I'll be more happy when the cafe bar can reopen then oh, tell me about the cafe bar because i miss the cafe bar <laughs> yeah no, no, yeah yeah we do too and um Jeff and I are speaking all the time, who's our head chef. Um, we just felt that on the 4th of July, we just wanted to wait a week or two and just see yeah. what's happening elsewhere, see who's yeah. doing it good, who, where we can learn. We don't mm. want to just, just open it. Mm. And, uh, and it's like become slightly a disappointing experience, you know, or mm. we have to introduce a degree of rigidity with mm. bookings. But a lot of our customers walk-ins so they've mm -hmm. come in to buy a sofa and they're just like oh i'll tell you what i've got our brochures here let's go and grab a coffee or cake or fish and chips or lasagna or whatever it is a salad mm -hmm. and then at the moment we say we'd, we would have to say well have you booked to book two days before and it's just trying to work out the best yeah. system and uh, obviously we're not just a lone restaurant mm -hmm. we're a restaurant within a furniture store yeah um yeah, we talked about so that, didn't we? How it's, it's really good to that the fact that you haven't had that, you know, 
pe pressure to actually open straight away and you can watch and reflect on what other people are doing and take best practice i suppose because of that because you as you said you yeah, are yeah you're absolutely right Kane. and it goes back to hey tom i missed the cup of the carrot <laughs> <laughs> i try and keep away from the cake stand i was in the gym seven days a week not three but the um uh thank you for the comment on that the i miss the cafe too um like i say it's it's just getting it right and getting the right system in place and um we felt just for jeff i mean jeff's just chomping at the bit to get back i mean really okay. is um but, but we just want to do it right and make it if possible flexible yeah. as well for the customers um mm. and make as so when they go to cover us oh that's feels we had to take tables out of course yeah the, the, the primary factor is the safety of our customers that that so that it starts from there and then it works it well back um so yeah so hopefully what is well, it now the I also give a little shout out to this young man he uh is one of close friends of my son we were um we were antenatal his mom and i together and tom has just got engaged so congratulations, congratulations tom. tom tom what you need to you, you've got a big mountain in the background show your face my friend that was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks what it is it is an impressive hike whatever you go whichever mountain you're going on it looks like k2 there but um tom is an he, incredibly talented orienteer um that's a, serious mountain. that's a serious mountain well done tom <laughs> congratulations Congratulations. <laughs> there you are. Shout out for Tom. So um, going forward then, um, you've obviously talked about, in fact, we haven't even mentioned the, the cafe bars had an amazing history, hasn't it? Because you, you opened it, what was it, about over 30 years ago? And then yep. you, I, I remember it with the spiral staircase. You used to go up those spiral staircases. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What it, no, no, you, great memory. So dad was on a furniture buying trip in Chicago in 87 give or take yeah 86 87 and um god bless ollie congratulations tom <laughs> and um while he was in chicago on the so the weekend he went down michigan avenue just to look at stores there's quite a lot of really good furniture stores on michigan avenue and one of the stores on the fourth floor or third floor had a coffee shop yeah and he was like what a genius idea that is you know but again if we remember back in 1988 very few I'm sure Harrods did have department stores, but furniture stores certainly didn't have mm -hmm. coffee shops, you know, the whole concept. So dad kind of flew back and just thought that the kind of seed was germinated in Chicago. And then he just said, well, let's, let's do it. And then um, uh, dad was, um, he put, he, 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 anyway, he plowed on, went on with it. And then um, there was a friend of his who he's known for years and years called David Birchinoff, who was a mm -hmm. serious, serious chef, like really good had had the um in goose street it's a really i should know this it's just my mind's escaped it's a, it's quite it's it's um goodness me so matt busby went there all the time not gonna i, I met some Matt busby there but it, oh goodness me somewhere in goose street pub it'll come someone yeah. will know the pub on that and and he left there and he went to work at the airport doing all first class meals for the airlines but wasn't really enjoying it and he came to see dad and he said i've just seen an advert for a head chef he said so dad's off David, you're, yeah, it's, it's a coffee shop. It's like, he said, no, 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 I'm just sick of the airport. I'm, it's so stressful. And I think we could do something really good together. So dad then had someone oh, wow. by his side who, who's a serious, serious player. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> I knew Margaret would come to the rescue. <laughs> my PA extraordinaire, Margarita, grazie mille, Margarita. Oh, my gosh. Nick, I didn't know you had this side of you. I'm going to have to let you talking to me in Italian. Oh, I've really... missed you, Margaret, since March the 23rd. Dear Lord. Yellow broom. But, but <laughs> Margaret joined in 88 from Umbrose. Margaret, remember, David Berwa. Uh, seriously good chef. And so he built the team, and then uh, Richard Dunkley joined. I mean, Margaret will tell. Richard Dunkley is his number two. He's such a nice, lovely family. Marlin, up until this year, was our housekeeper. So, again, kept in the family. And But that that's where the cafe bar was found founded and it's now such a big part of the whole store dynamic yeah uh, um, that's why we want to to get it right because like yeah. tom just put a uh, mr carrot cake you know people are coming just to, for the cafe bar which is great you know i'll tell you um, that when tom's responded to you he says thanks a lot i think that's for all the congratulations from everybody um yeah. one of the first dates was in your cafe 
<laughs> and the mountains, Piz, Piz, I don't know how to pronounce that, Tom. Please apologize. It's a serious mm. mountain, Tom. <laughs> Have you been there? No, but it looks hard. <laughs> Right. So, I think I'm on YouTube, but I don't think I'd have the courage to do it myself. But um, no, no. So the cafe bars key key for our business, and uh, it's great because it stimulates footfall. That said, we you know we sales have been good since the stores reopened. So mm. you know it's it's uh, but a lot of people are, are getting back into it. People still mm. very nervous um, mm. about eating out, and you know hopefully yeah. not yeah. just by the government. You know the incentives to to come back. You know will help uh, mm. bring footfall. So you know what you can do. Interesting to know how how is going to be managed actually with us from the twenty fourth having to wear masks. Yeah, I've got mine here. Have you? Oh, let's have a look. Oh, well, mine's pretty sterile. I, I, yeah, the uh, you yeah. get some of your Bianchi ones to Nick. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, branded ones. I'm afraid. Yeah, no, you're right. This is a little bit standard. Uh, my colleague Joe Benson should do that. No, no, no. no. Like I say, you can start to. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't want to start a new. <laughs> no, no. I've got enough on my plate. I keep on saying, I want to say no to things. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, but if someone could do, uh, who's listening, who could turn it around, I'll be more than happy to see any samples. Uh, oh. Yeah, no, I, I, if it, look, if it gives security and. Um, extra security or sort of stability not stability but just uh, um, uh the customers are more relaxing experience they don't have to worry about if everyone's in masks then it's consistency mm -hmm. it doesn't personally mm -hmm. me um you know mm -hmm. uh, but i understand people find them a bit yeah be difficult uh, eating. so it definitely certainly difficult eating i was just going to talk a touch and actually you you've actually been doing some amazing stuff during covid haven't you like in, in relation to the hospitals leighton sepping hill and knacklesfield do you want to just share what you've been doing because i think it's really nice for people to understand what you do do for the community because it's yeah. you're not just a furniture store and you get involved oh. in a lot of things as well um we were going to touch on toot toot and and the anti-bullying side yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah um well we also when it all i say locked down that first week we sat down and was like well, um what can we do there's some remarkable gestures being made across the country from yeah or giving their hotels to nurses people donating in the millions and amazing we we're like well what have we got that may be of interest well we've got product in the warehouse um and then we knew someone at stepping hill initially uh and they wanted to create a sanctuary room for all nurses doctors key start oh, okay. just to, after 13 14 in some cases 15 hour shifts just to but they still had to remain at the hospital just to go into a zone that was completely a departure from hospital so they're not looking at the same hospital standard nhs chair you know it's just so we responded to that um first of all and then i a uh, good friend, a very good friend of mine, John Burtis, who works in the medical trade, Westbourne Medical. He gave me a contact for Macclesfield Hospital. So I said, look, you're you're on our doorstep. You're Macclesfield. We're Macclesfield. We've been here 166 years. Can we help? So we, we rolled out there with Matron Gillespie, uh, Macclesfield, and then just latterly um, with Paula Bradley at Leighton. Okay. Uh, and then Craig, we helped... Um, Craig, who I mentioned before, who's been, who's been at the, he's COVID veteran 001. He's the, he's the, you know, he's, he's been there from the start. He, I got a call from Ben from Spire Hotel, Manchester. And he just said, look, we, we need to, to move our ventilators from the Spire to NHS COVID treating oh, hospital. Okay. So again, we got involved in that, but it's not, it wasn't for the headline. It was just, it's just a thing, but the feedback we've got has been has been lovely but it was just more what can we do because we've seen these heroes nurses um staff key workers do, do, and again key workers doing amazing things and um it was just our small way of, of just mm. saying we're here we're here you know we're backing you mm. you know um and that's the way we felt we could mm. add value to, mm -hmm. to, to them so if it's just given a mm. nurse a degree of comfort after a 15-hour shift and yeah. she, he or she can just forget um and uh then 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 we're we're more than happy so yeah we, we, we've tried to do our bit yeah definitely 
I mean, Jennifer, our daughter's been going into the hospital, actually. Um, oh, right. She's on the shift there today. So she's a medic who it's been, her life's been disrupted a bit and she's uh, had to stop her medical studies and she's been home. But it's, um, in fact, here we have another comment from Val. That's a great and a really good idea. Thank you, Val, for that. Um, yeah, so yeah, I know, I, I think it's a lovely initiative. And do you think they're going to, I mean, obviously, obviously very, everybody's appreciative of all the NHS have done and all the key workers and staff. Mm -hmm. So. Is it something, do you think, they're going to try and continue to make sure that their well-being is taken care of long term? I, I, I sincerely hope so. Um, I really do. Um, you know, the great thing is now that uh, we've got the contact details of all those local yeah. hospitals. And um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, you just hope so, don't you? I mean, they've just worked so hard and, you know, they're the heroes and they absolutely deserve their clapping on Thursday, you know, eight o'clock. It's funny, it, it, do you know what, Kalini, since going back to work, in so this is my fifth week back, the days of Captain Tom Moore feel like... Yeah, long time, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Long but it was like a blur, but it was, it was, yeah, it was, you know, there were some lovely, you know, moments like, you know, Captain Tom Moore and um, seeing mm. those you know, songs coming out and the nurses, uh, yeah, yeah they, they deserve all the credit they get. Yeah, it's been a long haul for a lot of people and there's obviously been a lot of anxiety and, you know, people are really concerned about, um, you know, going forward, financial worries and the job security. And I think I feel a lot for the young people going back to school in September who've like missed out yeah. on, yeah. on all of the, the transition period from year six to year seven and like the tens and twelves who've missed out on their continuity of education going into years 11 and 13 there's going to be a lot of challenges um with mental well-being which is something i'm obviously very passionate about um do you want to tell us a little bit about um the two two project that you are involved yeah, with? I, I, um it's 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 a good friend michael brennan who set it up and, and I, I really bought into it straight away because he, he tells you know he's the founder of toot toot um and he was terribly bullied at school and mm -hmm. uh, his story is one that he, to the point he relocated to another part of the country just to just to get away from it. But he, mm. he with help of another uh, someone he met at university, they developed this app um, to combat bullying first in schools, mm -hmm. um, and did really well and mm -hmm. uh, have done really well. And they've branched that out now into mm -hmm. um, workplace. So we're you know looking to take it here. And and also sports as well, so it, it, yeah. it it's great. And I know you do. You've got your anti-bullying piece as well, and and it's. I just think it's really important as well yeah. to be able to through this the two two thing. It's via an app. It's all anonymous, and um, mm. things can get you know. Mm. Um, I mean, my anti-bullying program, we, we've touched on this a bit. It's called Anti-Bullying 360, and it's something I wrote, actually, about three years ago. And it took me about two years to write. And it's yeah. and, I've, and I've delivered it now in several schools. And it, it is the, the idea of it is, is that because things are, you know, bullying goes on, but often people don't realise they're being bullied because, actually, there isn't a legal definition of bullying. That's the challenge. And so whether it's harassment in the workplace or bullying, um in schools um the challenge is sometimes people think you know it's teasing or it's just a mean moment or it's just a bit of conflict but actually yeah. it's when it becomes i have like this definition of rip it's got to be repeated it's got to be intentional and it's yeah. got to then be um on purpose so that that then becomes so like a mean moment like you have a fallout with somebody is not bullying but then you can actually start if people start understanding what the concept is and I also have an approach which is a 360 degree approach to it because most of the time when people want to get some help and support they have to go online they're they haven't all and as you said before people don't want to go to um see somebody about it the teacher they don't yeah. want to report it they're going to get called out by their mates they need that anonymity sometimes yeah. to get that support so yeah. what i try and do is my approach is like to, um, supporting all affected by the cycle of bullying so the person obviously who is is being bullied uh, the victim they need support strategies to deal with it but then you've also got the bystander who could actually be really in instrumental in stopping or stopping that cycle and supporting but sometimes they're frightened too 
and then you've yeah. got um they they you know in case they're on the receiving end then you've got the parent or partner or friend if it's an adult and they don't know how some it's been proven 50 percent of the time they don't actually know that bullying's um taking place but they don't they keep it quiet yeah, uh, yeah. and then well, organization. I, I mean just on that with the bullying it used to be stop at the school gate and then it'd be okay then it happened but now with social media and yeah. they find when they receive two to get the, the statistics that children are kind of you know logging in at 1 a.m you know so because of they're getting bullied on it, it yeah it's um it's that's you know, the problem with social media it's so much easier because they're you know i talk about the different types of bullying because people don't even realize things like possession bullying is quite important um yeah. you know people like get, having their stuff hidden it's bullying um yeah or just gangs you know the gang mentality and sort of sometimes when you're on the receiving end you start believing in yourself believing it's you so i think what's really important is 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 getting everybody on board with the whole strategy including the schools um, and the employers which i think it's amazing that you're getting involved with tutu and i'm trying to to get to the bully the, the perpetrator because they have got to sometimes is often what's going on for them at home or in the private life is what's causing them to be that way they're picking mm -hmm. on somebody weaker because they're on the receiving end but yeah. it's this it's i'm not excusing it i'm just no. saying that sometimes it's about getting them to actually realize the impact of what they're doing yeah. and if you can do it in a workshop and as and a, i always use drama techniques if you do it in a workshop situation where they can see what's going on it's really powerful so yeah, I, you know that's why I quite really resonate with the Toot Toot project that you've. Yeah, no, no, like I say, just something we, you know, I, I really buy into it, and I think it, I think it's. A good, I mean, we're we're only like I say, medium size, so it's not like we employ a thousand people. So you know, I, I know all the staff, so I'd like to think we've got a good dialogue that they would, and pretty much all the phone numbers we can WhatsApp or text, or, but you know, there are those who might not want that contact you, you look at it there a lot that the you know the young people that say school they they don't like they want to do everything online they don't want to speak <laughs> basically <laughs> give someone the phone they're like oh god you know fine fine like this and yeah right. so yeah no it's good it's good and you're also nice to nice. be speaking for an hour this year i could keep talk all day it's relaxed I never could, couldn't we we need to sort of think about rounding it up is it written it's 57 minutes i've got here nick i hope everyone's still on are they all logged in still or yeah, hello sid hello jem hello lisa moss ruth lloyd williams etc loads and loads of people people are sending lots of hearts and ticks and i don't know if you can see all these <laughs> I, I, I can't but like i say it's uh no it's, it's very heartwarming um to hear and it's like but know. it's also quite nice for people to get to know you as a person as well and and it's not just about the business and i've been doing these in conversations with so that people can actually get to sort of see the real person as well behind mm -hmm. behind it all in fact yes margaret royalance has just said still here <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, I met. I know she's awesome. Margaret has actually been to my signet shows. She supported me, and she's uh, she's brilliant. She is Hello, brilliant. Margaret. Brilliant, brilliant human <laughs> being. She's a brilliant human being. And uh, okay. um, Carl Lamptey has said, Nick Bianchi, a true gentleman. Ah. <laughs> he's a wonderful guy as well, Carl. By the way, and he talk about good people who do good things in the community, in the business, and charity. Dear Lord, Carl, you you set the you set the pace, you uh, set the example. Uh, yeah. Great guy, inspiring guy, Carl. Uh, but you know, you talk about Macclesfield quickly. The it's important to us, you know. Like I say, the town of Macclesfield. I mean, I know your listeners will have just come from Macclesfield, but you know, we do have an importance. I, I'm on the board of something called Macclesfield. Hi, Gem. Um, Macclesfield means business. Um, to try yeah. and be part of this steering group to uh, stimulate. The towns even though we're not in the town center but we still have a responsibility and you know it's important for us that the town center flourishes again so i'm involved in that those listening might know we were main sponsor of the football club maxfield town again really good local piece and um you know so wherever possible or again touched on the hospitals supporting the samaritans wh whatever it is it's it's uh it's it's important Maxfield, very proud. That's why the name, the Maxfield's emblazoned on our vans when we're going down to London or Bristol yeah. or, 
Yeah. So, Nick, going forward here from here, then, obviously, we've talked about how you've adapted and um, the online business, I think, has really helped you, hasn't it? Survive the, the storm a bit, hasn't it? And so you've been able to keep your business going. <laughs> yeah, I've got my bags under my eyes. That's something I said. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's very fortunate. That yeah. Great. Um, like I say, any, any, tips for, any tips for anybody going forward in terms of like, you know, sort of a businesses, whether they're small, medium? Surround yourself with great people. That's an obvious thing. Yeah. Um, digital Towers which I had up is is be flexible with the team um, as an office dog just just new rules you know majority of the staff we employ here that I, in, in this section are like 22 23 so mm -hmm. it's adapting to their needs but just you know trusting trusting mm -hmm. them and giving them responsibility and those who the good ones will take on board and thrive and and really pay that back you know so mm -hmm. if a colleague wants to work from home in the afternoon then fine you know you, you trust that, them. those 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 things that you're suggesting i think uh, are going to be really important as well moving forward for everybody because um i do transition coaching and i think i'm finding a lot of people who are thinking okay where am i going now because what i i think what's really important is like the jobs for example that young people are training for right now um and going to university for in 10 years time won't exist and we, we've seen that with with the advance in technology but also it's about them learning all the all round skills that make them, you know, that make them build them in terms of their confidence, the self-esteem, the resilience um, yeah. and those um, employability skills, really, which is, which is why I set up the Jigsaw project, which is to actually help with their employability skills. Because I think that will we'll need it. Just, just, just touch on that a bit there, Kalini, because that that's, it sounds fantastic. Well, what it is, it's how it started off is really, it's, it's sort of an amalgamation of all the things I do already. I've been already going into schools and doing workshops and confidence, resilience, mindset, helping people with uh, relationship challenges. Um, you know, there's always like of spats at school. Um, also, things like um, knowing what the goals are. So say, for example, if you're a year five and you want to be a, um, a prefect or, you, or even in secondary school, it's about knowing um, how to, you know, have a role model, for example. Um, yeah. It's looking at all of the things but it's also looking at your communication and i think that that you know there is so many there's so much research out there that people come out of university or even school and they've not got the because of so much technology they've not got the soft skills and the ability yeah. to, interpersonal skills to interact with other people and that's right. something i'm really passionate about from a my, yeah. particularly from a performance background but i think what i think is really there's a huge skills gap at the moment in in the uk where there are a lot of young people who are not they're called neets n-e-e-t-s not in education um employment or training and that situation has been exacerbated by covid and it's going to get even worse so um you know there are young i think if i was to look at the statistics there are so many people who because of covid they have lost the confidence. Yeah. Um, they have lost. They have lost all the the time that they've been usually spending with friends, um, yeah. and so they've become a little bit more socially isolated. And I think childhood youth isolation is a big, big problem, and it makes them people when they're actually going out. I know people who are really confident normally, frightened to actually go online or go on Zooms. Um, similarly, when they're actually going back to school, they haven't yeah, had yeah. that transition yeah. period. So um, the program is basically, it's called Jigsaw because it's putting the pieces together to yeah. actually give people those that knowledge and the skills and all the looking at what they can offer to, um, uh, you know, how do they can improve themselves and actually achieve their aspirations. Because as parents, what we want for our young people is for them to aspire to actually, you know, to be happy and fulfilled, be able to communicate ideas effectively, and also to be able to feel safe and secure. So the project basically is like things like helping with the anti-bullying, but it's yeah. also all the other challenges like teens face, like they might have difficult decisions to make or friendship issues or issues yeah. about sexuality or um, where are they going in the world? So I've, it's basically like a jigsaw of, of different um, modules which put together and I'm I'm putting it into schools. I'm trying to get grant funding at the moment so that I can actually um, make it available to schools so it's not finances aren't the issue. And then effectively schools can like, have me go in and or and others to do like 
a module on mental well-being or it might be a module on communication skills or on goal setting and strengths or it might be a module on confidence and resilience and how to build that so it's and i think another one is interviewing skills so i think interviewing skills is going to be a big one so that's the whole project and mm-hmm. and actually interestingly your toot toot i'm looking to um i'm looking to actually make it available so that young people when the school buy into that they mm-hmm. actually can the children can access that support through an app on their phone so they're able to do that so that's the long-term plan and you'll you'll do brilliantly you'll do brilliantly (laughs) it's going to be it's it's not just long term it's actually um i'm actually launching it now i say it's launching i've been doing it already but because of covid it's given me the chance to actually put it together into a nice package and we're calling it the jigsaw project and it's under my youth group signets so that'd be good so yeah that's that's exciting so we do have a lot in common in terms of 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 young people and and i love the fact that you obviously employ a lot of young people as well don't you you need youth in the business fellini you need youth yeah uh their energy their ideas um but equally in our business we're lucky we've got long established members of the team who cement the philosophy so when yeah. new people come in they see it there's no manual it's just we employ people who kind of again go back to our value serving delight delighting in serving the customer yeah. so my internet support manager just works below me david Drews. he's on it he cares you know and sometimes i feel bad because he's texting me at 10 o'clock at night and he's like i've got to get this order i'll see that customer oh no didn't like that oh. now you've got to have people who share the same values who care and yeah. you've got a chance you've got a fighting chance and do you know what though? I think so much of it is like leading from the top in the sense that you you emanate those values and the family do. Yeah. And so I think um I think just going back to the role model thing, young people coming in will see the values and they will then and it's also teaching them from grassroots what how important that is. Um, oh, well, look at dad serving the coffees, you know, yeah. he, he, in the cafe bar, you know, so so you know, someone coming in. On trial, so well, who's that? Who's that um, distinguished gentleman with the grey hair? It's always oh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, well, right, okay. And he's taking away cakes and coffees from, you know, it's, um, you know, we're just humble shopkeepers cleaning. I feel I like. So know. we've got one. <laughs> what a guy! The Yankee, what a guy! He's a, what a guy. He's a guy. Scott Hanley likes his premium beers as well. We have a good chats about that. So Nick, we've had an amazing conversation. Um, I don't know if there's anybody got any questions for us. Uh, but it's been so lovely talking to you. And we did talk about maybe we might have a follow-up anyway in the future. And so 100 percent No, no, it's it, it's it's a pleasure. I'm glad part two worked out better. This is <laughs> my, my anxiety is not high because as I said we were all sorted whereas before it was um but it's good. It's, it's lovely. I love seeing the comments. I mean Scott and I really, really well. Good lad. Yeah, it is uh, nice. What you're also not seeing at the moment, unless you have, uh, I've actually got so many people, Francesca, people who are saying hello and who've been watching. Um, right. So fantastic. So thank you, everybody, for your support. Um, yeah. And it's been amazing talking to you, Nick. So for wait for install. Grazie mille. Grazie mille. <laughs> oh, go on. are you going to say that again? Grazie mille. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and it's goodbye from me thank you everybody i've got another talk a few talks coming up but i'll be putting it in my page so that everybody oh oh here we are heather now can i mention my lovely friend heather tebay who runs local people magazine and uh I write for heather regularly uh for about three and a half years now and uh she is awesome and what she does also in the community so obviously through the the written word in in magazines so yeah so thank you heather for that that's lovely to hear from you and it's been great for everybody who's been able to contribute with your comments thank you nick and so we'll catch up again soon take care everybody have a good day bye bye thank you for listening everyone bye bye